What's up everyone? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in my lab in Denver, Colorado, and today I'm going to investigate the question of whether or not senescence is real and does it affect gourmet mushroom farming. So senescence is the idea that a mushroom or the mushroom mycelium, which is the roots of the mushroom, is going to break down over generations and generations of transfers. So laid out in front of my flow hood here, I have a bunch of subsequent years of slant cultures that I have been using to grow my gourmet mushrooms here in Denver. So I've got a few different strains that I'm going to pull out from slants. I usually just do the original OG mother cultures like I have my lion's mane culture from 2019 that's a really good strain and then I'm going to pull out the subsequent years that I used from a petri dish culture that I had transferred over and over so the past five years or four or five years now I've created this timeline which should capture senescence or the breakdown of that mycelium if it's really a problem. Now my personal take on this is that I believe that it varies from strain to strain. So my blue oyster culture I believe is very rigorous and it seems to hold up well to many many transfers but the lion's mane however it could start to develop these weird mutations or malformations that it might be from transferring that mycelium over and over. So the idea is that as the genes replicate, it could um, ac acquire different mutations, the telomeres could degrade over time, and some of that genetic material might get lost uh, on the petri dish or transferring from different grains to grains. So I will flip my camera around and do some inoculations onto petri dishes. We can observe the growth on petri dishes and then I will fruit them out and see if there's any difference between the 2019 slant and the slant from last fall which I took from a petri dish that I've transferred over and over again throughout the years. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this experiment. It's been a question on my mind ever since I started growing mushrooms and one of the main reasons why I kept such an intense library. Um, so we'll see. So I've got my workstation set up here and I've got my lion's mane, uh, Piapino and black pearl king cultures. So this one goes way back to 2019 and then we've got a lion's mane 2020 so 2019 2020 and then we've got the 2021 but it's from december so 2020 and then our 2022 which is what i worked off this year and then we've got our Piapino, the first mother culture from 2020. And then I've got a 2021 version of that. And then I also broke out the, uh, the freeze dried sample of the Piapino. So I wanna test the freeze dried one. And then we've got Black Pearl King from 2020, uh, 2021 and 2022 black pearl and i'm just going to transfer these onto their petri dishes which is malt extract auger so i've just got one dish for each of our samples and then i've got my myco geeky sterilizer here that i'm going to be using and my marker for labels and then i've got some sterilized scalpel handles so this one was from the lab rats uh, um, and I like working with the longer handles for the slant cultures so first I'm just gonna open this guy up so 
this is my first slant of a Niagara Falls lion mane mushroom that I got from Niagara Falls, New York. So shout out to Anthony, Anthony DeFranco for helping me get started growing mushrooms. And then this one was just from a petri dish that I had used during that season. And then all the subsequent slants are from that. And then this, this Piapino strain that I have right now, I have, uh, I started from spores and then I, I did some selective breeding on it and that's how we got our pin set popper strain. So this is a really nice Piapino. And then I freeze dried that mycelium back in April, 2021. So we'll see, um, I just added some sterile water to rehydrate it and we'll put it back onto a petri dish to see how that looks. And then I've got my Black Pearl King, the original slant that I got from Mycelium Emporium. Uh, I just put a liquid culture onto a slant and you can see, you know, there's some significant differences between the mycelium and this is a hybrid so I feel like it's more susceptible to senescence but if you look at the mycelium the lion's mane looks pretty much the same Piapino the mycelium looks pretty much the same between years as well all right, so this is where the fun starts. Alright, so I'm going to wrap up these plates and then I'll put them in the incubator at 72 degrees and we'll observe the different growth rates and then I will hold off until we go into our production for the springtime and I'll run all of these on um, different intervals so that we can observe if there's any differences in the fruiting from the mycelium itself it is really hard to tell if there's any difference so it'll be interesting to watch this progress. All right, what's up everyone? I've got an update after a week um, of our senescence video. So I pulled out all these strains from Slant and this is a one week growth update. So two plates did get contaminated. I suspect that the uh, Niagara Falls lion's mane from 2019 might have had uh, contamination and then that got transferred to the next one but the next two seem to be okay so I'm going to just pull the clean mycelium off of those plates to transfer them to new plates and that way we'll just keep running that mycelium through the experiment um, and then also the Piapino from the freeze-dried had some yeast contamination as well so some of the drawbacks of the longer term storage is that if there's any contaminant in there you're not going to know until years down the road so that's why it's always a good idea to have multiple mother slant cultures but i'll flip this camera around and go through the results so far um, it's really tough to decipher i think for the black pearl king it looks like the oldest strain is the strongest but then uh, the Piapini and the Niagara Falls lion's mane 
it looks pretty close or actually the opposite as far as the growth. So I'll go ahead and flip this around and we'll walk through these cultures. Okay guys, so you're looking at the 2019, 2020, 21, 22 lion's mane. So this one here, you can see there's a contaminant, but that is after one week. And then this one has that same contamination, so I think it might have jumped. Um, and then for the 2021, you can see the significant growth difference, but there may be some kind of inhibition happening from this contamination. So I'm gonna pull this off the plates and we'll do uh, some grain and fruit them out after that. But if you look at the Black Pearl King, the 2020 version is significantly larger than the other two. And then for the Piapino, it's pretty, pretty much the same. They both covered the plate. And then this right here is some yeast cells from the freeze dried mycelium. So it may have gotten pulled in during the process, but this is um, the progress so far. All right, so I've got my two contaminated dishes here and I'm going to carefully try to transfer some clean mycelium to salvage that. So I'll just carefully I'm gonna cut out a little segment without disturbing that mold. And then I'll just repeat that with this next one, which is going to be a little trickier. All right, everyone, so it's been two weeks since we inoculated these Petri dishes with our cultures that were subcultured over the years, and there's some really interesting results so far. Um, I'll flip this camera around so we can do some observations, but there's a big difference between the 2019 lion's mane and this past fall's lion's mane, which is four years later. Um, you can see there's a bunch of cottony mycelium. And then also with the, uh, the black pearl king, there's definitely a significant difference in growth. So I'll flip this around. We'll go through these observations and then I'm going to move them onto grain and we'll follow this all the way until fruiting to figure out if senescence is real, especially in lion's mane and uh, piapino, which I bred in house, and then the black pearl king, which is a hybrid between uh, Pleuratus aringi and a Pleuratus austriatus, or a blue oyster and a king oyster that was combined to produce a black pearl king. I think that that one is going to be the most sensitive but also lion's mane is showing a big difference on these auger petri dishes. So we've got our plates lined up here and this is the most interesting that I wanted to point out. So the lion's mane from 2019 that was taken off the slants 
has that fine wispy mycelium the one from a year later also has that wispiness but then you can start to see some of this uh, this cottony texture in the middle which slowly expands over time and then if you come over to the Piapino it looks pretty similar um, this one from 2020 it shows this little browning which is typical with the Piapino so that's normal but I'll probably take my subcultures from over here and then the Black Pearl King you can see really rigorous growth on the 2020 the 2021 kind of reverts and slows down tremendously and then we've got our 2022 which it seems to be rebounding but there's still some areas without growth on it so very interesting findings so far all right guys so you can see behind me here i've got my grain spawn all laid out um, this was sterilized a couple days ago and it's cooled and then I've got my cultures over here and the plan for this experiment is that with each subculture I'm going to do one grain jar of this Milo and then one grain jar of oats which I've been using consistently for the past four or five years now so the thoughts are that if you change up the food source between mycelium maybe it will revigorate it and give it some more life so i'm going to going to be transferring it onto different grain spawn um, i've used the same plates but when i transfer over the years i kind of switch up between malt extract and pda which is supposed to help prevent the senescence from happening so i'm also going to just run it on my normal oats and then my milo here and we'll see if there's any differences between the the grain spawn but i'm gonna stick to the masters mix because that's all i have available and it's getting close to market season so i'd really like some of these mushrooms to go off to market and i'm you know really used to growing on masters mix so i'm gonna stick to masters mix but change up the grains and we're gonna use four different years of lion's mane the uh, two different years of the piapino and three different years of Black Pearl King.
All right, so this is going to take about a week to 10 days to colonize. And then once that happens, I'll transfer onto bulk substrate and we'll fruit them out in the new fruiting tent. So I've got my different lion's mane uh, throughout the years on grain. I'm gonna be transferring those over to larger grain spawn bags. And then I've got my Piapino and Black Pearl King next. So I'll just flip this over, kind of go through my observations, and then we'll move these on to bulk once they colonize these larger grain bags. It's been two weeks since we inoculated our uh, senescence experiment species on grain. So we've got our, our black pearl king down here from the, uh, the oldest but unadulterated culture to the most recent culture after being transferred over and over again. So this is uh, 2020, 21, 22, and the same thing, these are uh, these are Piapino. And then I also did a difference between the Milo versus the Oats. So Milo, Oats, Milo, Oats, 20, 21. And then this is the lion's mane on top here. And we've got uh, 2019 Oats, Milo, Oats, Milo, and so on. And at the grain stage, there doesn't look like much of a difference between years. Um, I did note, however, on the lion's mane that the uh, 2020 and uh, 2022 are pinning a little bit earlier than I like. So all of these were inoculated at the same time. It might be because they're close to this light over here, but um, then the, uh, the 2023 is the closest to the light and it's not pinning, but there's this little piece of wood that's blocking this barrier. So I'll flip this camera around so you have a little bit better view of what's going on, but I'm going to be inoculating these onto bulk blocks next and then moving them into fruiting. So I would say for the plates, there was some differences in growth, but then as soon as they hit grain, whether they were on oats or milo, there's not a whole lot of difference of growth. All right, so this is the Black Pearl King here. And you can see, you know, fully colonized. The uh, Piapino really colonized as well. The older ones, not so much different. And then this right here is the pinning I was talking about. It's very minor, but as the bags move on like at either end there's no pinning so that's really the only difference I've seen and then this is the 2020 lion's mane and then this is the 21 22 and then the uh, 22 on Milo actually does not have the pins this is a six week update on our senescence video. And our first lion's mane from 2019 has already flushed out and I harvested it about 10 days ago. And then this right here, is the second flush from the 2019 lion's mane. So you can see really nice um, coloration and shape on that one. And then for the 2021s and 2022s, I kind of spaced them out over here. And you can see that they're slowly developing into a nice lion's mane. 
but I wanted to show you guys the differences um, as these mushrooms pinned out. So there's a little bit of that coloration that's pretty common on lion's mane mushrooms. And then as they develop, they're starting to kind of um, get those teeth that are typical. But these ones took about 10 or 12 days longer than the 2018 and the 2019 lion's mane. So this right here is another second flush. And you can see it doesn't have that as much of a pink coloration as some of the older ones. And then as I come down here, um, we've got the 2019s on oats, which it seems like the oats are doing a lot better than the Milo. Um, and then I can also see the trend with the, uh, the Piapini mushrooms as well. So we're getting nice flushes. So we've got some lion's mane, Milo 20 and Milo 22. This one was inoculated 5-3 and this one was done a week later. And you can see it's much faster colonization, but let's see how the fruits turn out. Even one year later, it's a slightly longer pin set. Um, so you can see I've got a bunch of pink oysters, some chestnuts, the piapinos, and then this is a this is just a regular piapino on Milo. So you can see we're getting kind of like a larger clusters. Um, or larger caps and smaller clusters on the Milo. So even just changing up the grains can definitely affect how your pins are coming in. But you can see over here, these are the 2021 um, Lion's Mane on oats and they're a little bit blobbier than the original 2019 culture. And then we've got some beautiful Piaps on oats compared to those larger piapinos on the Milo. So I just thought I'd update with those observations and I'll do my conclusion once we finish out these uh, second flushes. What's up mushroom fam? So it's been a few months since I filmed this experiment and I've had lots of time to think about the conclusions and some of the questions that were brought up during the results and fruiting process. So my answer to the question of whether or not senescence is real is that it's 100% a real phenomenon. I think that it varies from strain to strain um, as you can tell from the apparent degradation of lion's mane compared to the piapino, which I haven't been growing as long, um, especially the strain that we bred in-house. But I think that the main conclusions that I drew from this experiment were that it is very important to maintain a stock mother culture, especially if you're at scale. If you're a small hobbyist or just um, growing mushrooms, you know, at a small scale, I don't think that it's going to affect your production over time. It might, um, but as far as from week to week, it's not as drastic as that. 
So I hope this helped answer a lot of um, the questions that you guys had about senescence. I think that the degradation can be caused by many factors. So that's another question that was kind of brought up during this whole process is what causes senescence? So that's something that I'm going to be exploring. Um, are there ways to prevent senescence or are there ways to reverse it? I think that diving more into uh, genetic analysis or molecular analysis is going to lead to more and more answers about this subject. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please give us a thumbs up. If you're looking for more mycology videos like these, subscribe to our channel. Definitely go check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. We, uh, we've got a bunch of liquid cultures that we're breeding here behind us. And we've got our um, production line always listed. Um, our Lion's Mane is probably one of my favorite strains as well as the Piapino. And we are going to be doing some new fall varieties for the colder weather that's coming around here in Denver. Um, and then over the winter, I'll be breeding a bunch of mushrooms again. I'm, I'm doing some new techniques that I started in February and I'm seeing some really good results. So stay tuned. If you have any questions about this experiment, I know that it is a very small scale and for the Black Pearl King oysters, so the uh, original batch ended up pinning and fruiting and then the subsequent batches, they never fruited. So I just cut them out of the experiment after the grain spawn, but it was interesting results on the Petri dishes, which is why I kept it in there. Um, so I feel like with the hybridization, um, it was already kind of a weak genetic mushroom and maybe it just fizzled out. I think that there's more questions that were raised than questions that were answered. However, I do think senescence is real. If you have any more information, you can comment below. I'm always looking for uh, more material to learn about this. I'm constantly learning. I don't consider myself an expert. I'm just documenting my mushroom farm journey. All right, guys, thanks for watching until the end. And until next time, much love.